You know, I'm really gonna miss you guys. Yeah, yeah, I know. We had a lot of fun together. We did. Yeah, I know, I know, I'm down too, but don't worry, we're gonna keep in touch. Every Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, the remake stars Jared Padalecki, Danielle Pennebecker, and is directed by Marcus Nispel. Wow, guys, it's here. I can't believe it. This is the final Friday the 13th review. There were 12 of these suckers. I didn't think we were going to get through this, but finally, here we are. And before we get started, I just wanted to say I've had so much fun going through the highs and the lows of this series, and I've really enjoyed uh, getting in the comments and discussing all these movies with you guys. I really appreciate all that you guys have contributed to these reviews. I mean that. And I hate to end it on a low note, but the remake is upon us. Um, let's get into this. So it had been six years since uh, Freddy vs. Jason. By this time, the whole remake uh, craze was in full effect. Uh, you had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake that kind of kicked the doors open for all that. Shortly after that, you had Rob Zombie's Halloween. And a remake to Friday the 13th was just inevitable. And it was really wanted. This was a movie that I was really looking forward to. And it was cool because we were getting the Friday the 13th name back. Because New Line Cinema and Paramount, they co-distributed this movie. Or they joined forces so they could put it out there and they could use the Friday the 13th name. And this story really combines elements of the first four Friday the 13th movies. And I'd say the main plot point of the movie is Jared Padalecki's character, Clay. He is searching for his sister, Whitney, who at the beginning of the movie is kidnapped by Jason. And this is very similar to the storyline in part four when you had a character that was searching for one of Jason's victims. And so throughout the movie, Clay is going door to door uh, around Camp Crystal Lake trying to find out if anybody knows of the whereabouts of Whitney. And then he comes upon this group of complete and total douchebags. And that is one of my biggest problems of this movie, but we will get into that. But first, let's start out with the good, because there are some really cool moments in Friday the 13th, the remake. And this is the film in the series that I am conflicted with the most because what it gets right, it gets really right. And what it gets wrong, it completely screws up. First off, I love the atmosphere of this one. I love the cinematography from Daniel Pearl. I recently did a review of The Boy, and one of the things I really loved about that movie was the cinematography. And Daniel Pearl also did the cinematography for that film. As many of you might know, Daniel Pearl did the cinematography for the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the remake. The guy just really knows how to create a sense of tension, a sense of mood. He knows how to light a scene for a horror movie. And the remake of Friday the 13th really benefits from that. It looks like the darkest that a Friday the 13th movie has ever been. And by darkest, I don't mean the actual screen, although the screen is dark, but I'm saying in tone. Because his cinematography is bathed in atmosphere, it just gives more depth to the actual movie. Also, I like the idea of setting up a group of campers and picking them off one by one in the first 20 minutes of the movie before we even get to the title card. And I'm going to admit, that was a pleasant surprise. I didn't see that coming. I, I remember watching the movie and I was like, wow, they're killing these, these people off pretty quick. Oh, boom, we got a title card. Sweet. And then they move on to another whole new batch of victims. Also, I got to mention Derek Mears. Derek Mears is probably the best part of this movie. In my opinion, Derek Mears gives one of the greatest portrayals of Jason I've seen probably since Ted White and Kane Hodder. He really does a great job in this role, and it's interesting to note that he is a huge Jason fan. He grew up loving the character of Jason. He has stated that he could relate to him because he has had some disabilities himself, and he would be picked on because of that when he was a child. And you can tell in this movie, he is giving it his all. He is going at it full assault. He is totally in the zone, if you will, during every scene that Jason is on screen. And I love that Jason in this movie, he, he walks fast or he runs, but he is really kind of a Rambo type Jason. He is a hunter. He lives underground and he just wants to be left alone. And I like that they got Jason back to his roots. You know, this wasn't like the Kane Hodder zombified Jason. This is really kind of a more stripped down, realistic version of Jason than we see in the later films. Also, 
I'm a huge fan of Sackhead Jason, and I loved that they brought that aspect of the character back in this movie, at least for the first 20 minutes. And I gotta admit, I thought he looked even cooler as the Sackhead Jason in this movie than he did with the hockey mask. And I know that's probably a controversial opinion. And I also really liked Jared Padalecki and Amanda Rigetti uh, as the brother and sister duo, Clay and Whitney. And I also like the idea of Jason kind of having a hostage and really giving the plot a little bit more beef than what we usually see in these movies. And I thought the two of them, they played off of each other really well. And now let's get into the cons. The reason I brought up Jared Padalecki and Amanda Rigetti is because the big major problem of this movie for me, aside from them two, is the rest of the characters. The characters in this movie are probably the most annoying characters out of the whole franchise for me. If you remember around the time the movie Superbad was really popular and it really seemed to me like the writers were trying to infuse those type of characters in a Friday the 13th movie and it just didn't work well at all. And also they weren't funny and they were trying to be funny and that made it even more annoying. To me they were more caricatures than characters and I hated every one of them. And I totally get uh, in a movie having characters that you love to hate. But you don't love to hate these characters. You just want them off your screen completely. You are not enjoying anything that they're doing. And they're just being annoying the whole time. And also it seems like the writers wanted to throw in a lot of sex in this movie. And hey, I have no problem with having TNA in a slasher movie. The two go hand in hand like bread and butter. But when it gets in the way of the movie, then it can be annoying. Guys, I hated these characters so much that it's really unfortunate because this movie really had a lot of promise for me because of all the good about it. Because there are some really great things about it. Derek Mears was an awesome, awesome Jason. And I think if he would have had great characters to play off of, this could have been one of the best Friday movies. But because the characters are so just unbearable, in this movie, I'm going to give it a low, low humdrum. I'm not going to give it a two hours loss because I can actually still watch this Friday movie and enjoy the good parts of it, but it really gets close because of how bad the characters are. So guys, what do you think about the remake of Friday the 13th? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and drum dumb out.